In this game development tutorial, I'm going to show you how to code this gun range demo with a handful of different guns. By the end of this video, you'll have learned how to set up a basic gun object, which can create its own separate bullet objects. I'll also teach you how to make use of structs to make it extremely easy and fast to create different types of guns. I'll also cover a bunch of extra features like bullet spread, burst weapons, knockback, variable fire rate. In summary, everything you need to know to get started on your action-packed shooting game. With that said, I'm going to head back inside and boot up Game Maker. <laughs> the door doesn't move at all. <laughs> now that Game Maker is running, note that I'm using the latest version of the software in this video. I'd recommend you do the same, although you won't run into any problems as long as you're at least on version 2.3. To save you some time, I've created a template project which already contains all the sprites and sounds this project is going to need. This is a .yyz file and it's linked in the description. Once inside GameMaker, just click Import Project and select the file you downloaded. You'll see that when it's completed, there'll be an asset folder which contains one sound effect called SND underscore shoot, as well as three gun sprites and two bullet sprites. If we open the first gun sprite called Belge underscore Scar, notice that the sprite origin in the top right is set to custom. The sprite origin is the point on the sprite where it will be drawn and the point around which it will rotate. You can move this, but I've positioned the origins so that they are vertically aligned with the barrel of the gun and horizontally aligned with the grip. Next, if you open up one of the bullet sprites, you'll see that there are actually two frames. The first is a white circle and the second is the actual bullet. We'll write some code to make the bullet display the first frame for a split second and then switch to the bullet frame, which should give the impression of a muzzle flash. That's a trick I learned from Vlambia games like Nuclear Throne. Now create a new folder which we'll call code and right click it, hover over create and then select object. Rename this object to obj underscore gun. The last bit of game maker setup we need to do is create a room. To do this, just right click on the assets folder, hover over create and select room. Inside the room, look at the room settings panel and change the size to 256 and 144. This is a good size for our pixel art, however your monitor may be much larger than this. If you want to resize the window, click Enable Viewports, then under Viewport 0, check Visible, and then set the camera width and height to the room width and height, and then set the viewport width and height to that size multiplied by a power of 2 such as 1024 and 576. You can also set the background color to whatever you would like by clicking the background layer and then clicking the color option. Then click back to the instances layer and drag in the OBJ gun object you created before. I'm going to place this in the left third of the room and align it to the vertical middle. Now it's time to start coding. Open the gun object and make a create event. Inside this, I'm going to use three backslashes to create a header and set the description of the event to variables. If you click Save, you'll see this update in the Events panel. Here, just initialize the variables mouse angle and knockback angle, both to zero. Also initialize OX and OY, setting them to X and Y respectively. Next, create a step event which we'll call Moving and Shooting. All we need to do here for now is set the sprite index to one of the gun sprites we've created. Next, let's write a bit of code to flip the sprite vertically if the gun has rotated all the way over to the left. To do this, we just say, if the X position of the mouse is greater than the X position of the gun object, set the Y scale of the image to 1, otherwise set the Y scale of the image to minus 1. Now, we want to update the two variables we created before. To make our gun rotate smoothly, we need to do some tweening, which is where we use some maths to change a value smoothly over time. In GameMaker, normally we use a lerp function to do tweening, but when we're dealing with angles which treat 0 and 360 as the same angle, we need to use another method. All we'll do is write mouse angle minus equals angle underscore difference, which just calculates the distance between two angles, which we pass in as arguments. Input the angle we're changing, and then the angle we want to tween to, which is the direction from the center of our gun, which is x and y, towards our mouse position, which is mouse x and mouse y. Finally, multiply this all by 0 0.5. If this was 1, it would rotate instantly, and it would get slower as the value got lower. Now we're going to do something very similar for the knockback angle, but the second argument will be 0, and we'll multiply it by 0 0.05 so it rotates slower. To calculate the final image angle, simply add these two variables together. We also need to do two last lerps. 
lerp x to ox at whatever rate you want, but I think 0 0.05 is a good starting point, and lerp y to oy at the same rate. This is going to make sure that our gun always returns to the original position after gun kick has been applied. If you are attaching the gun to a character, you could replace ox and oy with the x and y coordinates of the player object. If we run the game at this point, we can see our gun, and it should always rotate towards the mouse, rotating smoothly, and it should always be the right side up. Close that down and head back to the create event. We're going to start coding the shooting system now. At the top of the create event, we're going to create a struct called bullet. Structs are very useful because they're basically variables which contain other variables. So they're like objects, but once they're created, they don't take up any processing power. Inside the struct, we're going to initialize a handful of new variables. Sprite, speed, rate start, rate end, rate multiple, and fire rate. Inside structs, instead of using equals, you need to use a colon, and you should have commas at the end of each line. I'm going to write what each variable is used for in the comment. For now, use my values and know that a lower fire rate is faster. The other variables are used for guns, which speed up or slow down over time. Next, we're going to do a similar thing by creating a struct called gun. Copy down these values for now and copy my comments so you know what everything does. Finally, we need a couple more variables. Initialize can shoot, which we'll use as a timer, and bullet index, which we'll use to know what kind of bullet to shoot. Now we're going to quickly set up the bullet object. This doesn't need a sprite because we'll assign it one later in the code. All it needs is a step event. In the step event, first we need to set its image index to 1. We do this because the first frame of the bullet sprite, which is index 0, is just the big circle, but the second frame, index 1, is the actual bullet sprite. By switching from the circle to the bullet immediately when the bullet is created, the momentary image of the circle sort of looks like muzzle flash. Next, we're going to use the length dir functions to actually move the bullet. What these functions do is calculate the trigonometry needed to move a coordinate a certain distance in a certain direction. In this case, all we need to do is add to our x and y coordinates the result of these functions with speed and image angle as arguments. The result is going to be that every frame, our bullet will move speed amount of pixels in image angle direction. Finally, initialize the local variable p, meaning padding. All we're going to do is say, if the point x, y is not inside a rectangle, which is p bigger on each side, then destroy the object. This means that if the bullet goes 64 pixels outside of the room, it will be destroyed. That's all for the bullet object. Let's do a quick test now to see how that looks. Go back to the step event of the gun object and create an if statement, checking if the left mouse button has been pressed. Inside that, create a new instance of a bullet object at the x, y position of the gun. Now, pass a struct as an argument and set the sprite index to bullet 0, the speed to 10, and the image angle to the image angle of the gun. Now, run the game and start clicking. You should see a bullet object be created in the center of the gun and start moving in the direction you clicked. You should also see the muzzle flash effect happening. Of course, this looks pretty bad and isn't a very flexible way of coding the shooting system, so for now, comment out this code and we'll start coding the proper system. The first thing we're going to do is instead of always checking if the mouse is being pressed, we're going to use a ternary operator to decide whether the mouse needs to be pressed every time you want to shoot or if you can just hold it down. Remember in our gun struct, we made a variable called full auto. So what we're going to do here is make a local variable called shoot and check gun.fullauto. Then whatever we put after the question mark will be what happens if full auto is true. And what happens after the colon is what happens if full auto is false. So when full auto is on, we're only checking if the button is being held down, whereas if it's off, we're checking if the button has just been pressed. We'll also initialize a variable called ammo, which is just a reference to the current ammo in the gun. Next, we're going to actually set up the timer, which will allow us to shoot. All we have to do is say, if can shoot is greater than zero, can shoot minus minus. So if the variable can shoot is greater than zero, reduce it by one. Then write else if shoot. So if can shoot is equal to zero, and we can shoot as determined before, then execute the following code. Here is where we're going to separate some code from this object just to make things more readable. First, reset the fire rate by setting can shoot to the fire rate of the ammo the gun is using. Next, use the lerp function to lerp the fire rate to the target final rate. This is used for when you're shooting a gun that could slow down or speed up as it shoots. Then, call the shoot script, although it will be flagged by GameMaker because we haven't made it. After this, create a variable called delay, which references the burst delay of our gun. What we're going to do here is use the call later function to repeat the shooting script to create a burst gun effect. 
So what we need to do is use a repeat function to repeat the following code, but only repeat it the burst number minus one because we've already executed the script once. Now just use the call later function, setting the period to delay, the units to frames, and the callback function to the shoot script. After this, just add the delay to that temporary variable so on the next repeat, the bullet will take longer to be created. The last thing we're going to do in this event is just reset the fire rate if we changed it at all in that alert function. So we need to check if we're not holding down the left mouse button, so if we're not shooting, and then instead of lerping the fire rate to the end, lerp it to the start. Great, now we can just spend the rest of the tutorial on that shooting script. So go ahead and create the shoot script, and the first thing we're going to do is write with obj underscore gun and then put a pair of curly braces. The reason we do this is because we use the call later function to call this script, the script doesn't always know which object has executed it and won't be able to refer to that object's variables. By using with, we're saying always run this code on the gun object. An example of referring to the gun's object variables is the next line of code we're going to write. We're just using the audio play sound function and then passing the sound as gun.sound. Priority doesn't really matter as long as you're using the same number for all of your sounds, but go ahead and check the documentation for more information on that. We'll say false for loops, and then for the next two arguments, gain and pitch, let's use a random float value from 0.8 to 1. This just adds a nice variety to all of our bullet sound effects. Next, if you remember from that test we did before, we need to calculate where the tip of the gun is so that we can create the bullet object there and not at the center of the gun. We know the direction the gun is pointing in, so all we need to do is work out the distance from the center to the tip. This is fairly easy, so all we do is take the width of the current sprite and take away the x offset of the sprite. So we've already dealt with burst guns, but now we need to deal with spread guns. First, make a for loop, which will iterate from zero to the spread number we've set. Inside this loop, we're gonna work out the different angles. So if we start with the image angle of the gun, which is the direction you're aiming plus the knockback, then we add the spread amount, but multiply by i, so that each bullet is offset more than the last. And then we just need to offset it so that the bullets are centered around the gun's muzzle. To do this, multiply the spread number minus one by the spread angle divided by two. With that done, we're going to use instance create depth to create a bullet visually in front of the gun so that it's always visible. We're going to use that distance value we worked out before inside a length stir function to calculate where the tip of the gun is then pass depth minus one to say in front of the gun, pass obj underscore bullet, and then pass a struct. This struct will set the image angle of the bullet and will set it to the angle we worked out just before and a random amount of inaccuracy, which most guns have in the real world. Next, we'll set the sprite to the sprite of the current bullet and do the same for the speed. Then outside of the gun loop, we're going to add some gun kick and knockback. Kick will just affect position, whereas knockback will affect angle. First, write x minus gun.kick times image underscore y scale. We know that the image y scale is flipped depending on which way the gun is pointing. So this just makes it so that the gun moves left when shooting to the right, and the gun moves right when shooting to the left. Second, we're going to do the same, but adding gun.kick to the knockback angle. Of course, you could add a separate knockback value to the gun struck for more granular control. Finally, just iterate through the ammo types. This means that each gun can have an array of ammo it will cycle through. For example, a gun might have five rounds of bullet type A, and then it will shoot one round of bullet type B before returning to type A. To do this, all we need to do is say if our bullet index is less than the array length of gun.ammo minus one, add one to bullet index, otherwise set it to zero. Now that's all done for this script, so if you press play and run the game, everything should now be working. Okay, so I'm back in the create event for the object, and we're live now, this is unscripted, so I'm just going to give a little demo of all the things that the system can do. So first, we're going to look at this section with ammo. So you can see I've said array of ammo structs. Now, this is one of our ammo structs, and you can see that sprite is set to bullet zero. So if we just copy and paste this, and we call make this uh, refer to a new struct called maybe bullet one, and then we change the sprite to bullet one instead of bullet zero. So bullet zero is yellow, bullet zero is red. Now if we go to this ammo array, and instead of just having bullet, we put comma and then bullet one as well. So bullet and bullet one. Now if we run the game, we've got our basically demo from before, but we're going to shoot. And now you're going to see it's going to alternate between yellow and red. And you can also see 
if I bring the window over here, I've put spread number to 3 and spread angle to 15. And so that means there's 15 degrees of, between each bullet. So one's going directly in the middle, one's going 15 degrees up, and one, go, one is going 15 degrees down. Now let's keep this, but I'm going to make this burst number 3. So it's going to be three bursts. It's going to go but, but, but. And then burst delay, I'm going to put five between five frames between each one. So now we're going to shoot, and there's going to be three coming in the spread, but also three coming in the burst. So it's, you can kind of see these distinct bursts of three, but always with that yellow and red rotating. Now you can also see that in the sprite, I can, you know, I can change this to anything. So I can change this to this. Uzi Sprite, um, and I can really change the name to Uzi. Um, I can increase the kick quite a lot. I can add some inaccuracy, so I'm going to add quite a lot of inaccuracy. I've increased the kick. Um, now if we run the game, now yeah, there's a lot of kick, there's a lot of inaccuracy, which sort of messes up the angles, but it looks pretty chaotic, it looks pretty nice. Um, but I'm going to reset all of this, and I'm going to change the spread number back to one and the spread angle to zero. And now what I'm going to show off is this rate star, rate end, rate molt thing. So if we change the initial fire rate, um, let's leave it at 20, but let's change this end fire rate to five. And so if zero means that it's not going to change at all, one means it's going to change instantly. So let's put it 0 0.1 and we're going to see this fire rate speed up from 20 frames between each bullet to just five. So we're going to start shooting, and it's pretty slow. Now it speeds up. Um, and that's sort of, I don't know, like the Negev from CSGO. Um, but we can sw switch all these around, and then so let's say rate start five, rate end 20, start at fire rate five. So now it's going to start quick and then slow down to that initial rate from before. Um, obviously, you can change the sound if you want different sounds for different guns. You can change the speed of the bullet. Some other things you could do are potentially you know, add an offset for each for the angle. So maybe if you wanted a gun for whatever reason that always shot upwards, you could add a 90 degree offset. You can make uh, a variable in the bullets which homes in on enemies. So, you know, one will always instantly target enemies, but zero would just go normally in a straight line. Um, but that's pretty much everything that I've implemented in this demo. And obviously, all of these variables can be tweaked. Maybe if you've got a Borderlands looting style game, you might want to generate new random guns so you would just fill all of these values out randomly. Maybe you've got um, more of a sort of tweaking, crafting kind of game where you actually want to expose these variables to the player. So in that case, they could maybe do, get some upgrades to decrease their inaccuracy or increase their speed of the bullets or something like that. But hopefully that's a, a good starting point for you guys. So definitely make use of this tutorial make your own sort of top-down shooter game, or even though this could be used in really any sort of game, like maybe even a platform run and gun type of game. So definitely try this out for yourselves and definitely leave a comment below with a link to whatever project you're working on using this tutorial, because we really like to see when you're using Game Maker to have fun and to make some cool things. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and make sure to leave a comment with any ideas for things that you might need help with in Game Maker. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.